Today's video is going to be about SSH because SSH is probably one of the most powerful things out there when it comes to computing and remote access. And I'm going to go into one controlling through the CLI or command line prompt or command line interface and then also go over using X11 forwarding so we can actually launch graphical programs through X11, which is pretty darn powerful. Now I'm gonna show this both in a Windows environment and also a Linux environment. For Windows, I will not be using native command prompt or PowerShell because a lot of the native SSH capabilities of Windows just plain sucks. It just does. So I'm going to be using putty in Windows instead because I really enjoy tab completion and then a lot of options I get uh, in putty where native Windows just doesn't give it to me and I just honestly hate a lot of its built-in Linuxy functions they've been trying to tack on. Uh, some of it is okay, other parts of it I'm just like, yeah, I'm not sold. I'm not buying into that hype. But I digress. And then over on the Linux counterpart, we're going to be using Terminal completely and being able to remote in and do all the same things we do in our Windows, except without any of the third party stuff. We're going to be using directly out of the terminal to control through the command line prompt. And then we'll also do some other X11 forwarding that's a little more seamless, in my opinion. So with that, let's go ahead and jump into the video and go over X11 forwarding and SSH on your computer. This video is brought to you by UpCloud, superior cloud hosting with simplistic pricing starting at $5 a month and 100% uptime guarantee. Check them out by clicking the link in the description. Okay, to start out with, we need to download Xming. Xming is like Xorg's uh, Windows counterpart. So you need this installed to be able to do X11 forwarding, meaning running graphic stuff in Windows from a Linux SSH prompt. So what we do is download Xbing server from SourceForge. This right up here is the, the actual download site. We'll go download and then just simply uh, let the download finish, run this and follow the status process. So very easy. Uh, I'll put the link in the description below. So once that's installed, you'll have a little X on your taskbar. Um, I would highly recommend running the X launch, uh, selecting multiple windows, display number zero, uh, start no client, and then leave clipboard checked. With these settings, you can go ahead and hit finish, and it launches Xming server, and you'll see that icon in your, your system tray. Uh, and then from now on, you can just hit Xming um, or go through that process again. Either way, if you run into problems, I would rerun the X launch. So with that done, let's go ahead and launch into PuTTY. Um, now there's a couple things in the PuTTY config that I want to go ahead and mention. First, this is the actual Linux box that has SSH enabled, the service running, and it's configured with X11 forwarding. And I'm gonna get into actually setting that up because uh, when it comes to connecting from a Linux box to a Linux box, both need to have SSH installed. And the configuration also needs to actually uh, be set the same way. But I'm gonna show you that in the Linux portion of this video. But let's say that's already done. You'd put the Linux boxes IP up here. And then under SSH on the left-hand side, we can go to X11, make sure enable X11 forwarding is ticked. With those two options in, a lot of times I come back here, I go ahead and type like main, main PC, and then I would hit save. And what this does is it saves one, your host IP address, and then it also saves that SSH uh, X11 forwarding config, so you don't have to set this every time. So with that done, we can just simply hit open and then we'll go ahead and type our username and password. All right, now that we're logged into that machine, you'll be able to see that this is the standard uh, prompt. Actually, I've modified Bash, Bash RC a little bit and uh, it didn't bring in some of the fonts, like the Powerline fonts that Linux has, but that's just because this is Windows and there's not too much we can do about it. It still looks pretty good and very readable. So from here, let's do like G edit. This should go ahead and launch G edit. And what this does is it, it pipes that program all the way through the actual 
interwebs or or your local area network if you're connected locally like i am here or if this is a remote server you can also do this over the net once you establish ssh so very powerful tool uh gedit is working great uh, the only drawback to this is there is a little bit of latency and that latency kills let's say uh, doing X11 forwarding in gaming. A lot of people have attempted this, and to some success, uh, you can you can do it. But overall, I, I don't recommend it. Other things is uh, going ahead and launching entire desktop environments through X11 forwarding. While it is possible, again, uh, I don't recommend it. So, like, let's say you're looking for a certain file. A better thing would be to just launch that file manager like let's say i know i have nautilus installed in there i can just type nautilus and it would go ahead and launch the nautilus file browser locally so let's see what it pulls up when i type nautilus now you'll see there's a, is a little bit of latency here as it communicates but it should pop up or or maybe it's not let's try dolphin so here's dolphin it kind of pulled it in but we're having some issues with rendering uh, so uh, let's go ahead and close out of this one. All right, let's try Thunar. Aha, Thunar works. <laughs> so it depends on what it is. The more basic the file manager, the easier it is to launch. Now, Nautilus probably has too many extensions and other things I've tacked onto it. Probably the same with Dolphin because I use both those file managers the most. Um, Thunar I almost never use, but it is a little more simplistic than both Nautilus and Dolphin. Um, there's a lot of other file managers out there that are even more simplistic. I think PC Man FM, uh, don't quote me on that, but I've never used that one. But I know it is uh, also very good. There's literally Linux has tons and tons of file managers. So I would recommend picking more of a minimalist file manager if you're going to be doing this a whole bunch. Uh, but this is really a neat thing that you can launch this, manage your files, and go, oh, you know what? I didn't put this. Uh, video in my actual uh, SSH on my Caden Live. So if I grab that, copy it, and I go over to my next cloud, drop it in here, then I know, okay, I can grab that file from my next cloud because it's synced to the inter internet. So that's a really good way to manage your files and have like a, a local repository or a way to upload. Or, you know, uh, let's say you wanted to go ahead and go, you know what, I have an extension on my web browser, I know I'm using uh, Google Chrome Stable on my Debian system in there, not Chromium. Like out here, I know I'm using Chromium. But let's see if it can launch Google Chrome, and maybe from there I can grab that specific setting I had on that, that computer and it would do it. So, But of course, Google Chrome crashed on me, so I, I couldn't get that one going. But other than the X11 forwarding, which, uh, like I said, the more complex the, the graphic needs of that certain application, the probably the more problems you're going to run into. Like, as we saw here, we had some issues with, like, Nautilus and Dolphin not properly displaying, like, icons and things correctly. Uh, Google Chrome uh, crashed on me when I tried to launch it. Uh, Thunar did launch. Gedit. Uh, the more basic programs, obviously, I didn't have any issue with. Uh, but it, it's a good way to get in your system and just do simple file management and other things if you need a graphic editor. Uh, probably the most powerful thing is like when you're in here, let's say, well, let's do a listing, and I wanted to edit like release.key. Instead of doing that through Nano, I could just do gedit. What this does is it grabs that key, pipes it in here, and, and does it all right here, which is, is pretty awesome. So that that's a great way of incorporating that graphic a uh, graphic applications while you're in the command line interface so very important when you're in terminal i love x11 forwarding like i said i don't really launch into a, a full like desktop suite or anything like that because one it, it's extremely wasteful and two it can be a little bit buggy and and it's just not as fast as if you're just in here and typically you just need to restart a service or do something of that nature. That's the power of really X11 forwarding and also SSH. So with that, let's go ahead and exit out of here and jump over to our Linux box because I find it's a far more compatible on Linux than it is uh, pushing it all through this old outdated uh, Xming server. That could also be part of the problem with some of these crashes. So let's go ahead and run through all this stuff we just did, but do it 
on our Linux box. All right, so now we're on our Arch-based PC out here in the office, and we're going to be going and SSHing into uh, the PC inside. So first we'll launch Terminal, and we'll just go SSH, Titus, at, and then my inside PC's name. And this would obviously could be an external IP address if SSH was actually enabled from an external port. So with that... But also just be careful about enabling SSH in an external port because it is an extremely vulnerable attack vector. Uh, as soon as people see port 22 open on their router, uh, you're definitely going to get hackers and people hitting you. So one, pick another obscure port and then also deploy tar pitting where it only allows a very, very limited number of requests per minute. So with that, we are in our inside PC, and as you see, it already looks considerably better on Linux compared to the putty in Windows. And honestly, if I did Windows Command Prompt SSH, it would have looked at even uh, far worse using the native SSH uh, capability. So with that, let's go go ahead and hit G Edit up. Make sure that's going. As you see, there's not nearly as much latency as well. X11 to X11 is a little bit easier when it's Linux to Linux. That's also a big thing. With that, let's let's try Nautilus again. I remember on our Windows box, this didn't work at all. It just wouldn't launch, which it looks like it's emulating the same functionality out here. Let's go ahead and do Dolphin. Uh, Dolphin looks about the same, maybe, maybe a hair better, but uh, we're missing some icons. Uh, just bouncing around here. Let's uh, let's see if it can pull much of this in. Yeah, we're gonna run into problems just like we did on uh, the Windows-based version. And then Thunar pulled in fine on Windows. Let's double check that. Nah, Thunar is working great here as well. It's probably an add-in that I enabled that that caused that to happen because I've done Nautilus and Dolphin through. Uh, X11 forwarding in the past with no problem. Uh, probably something funky I've done. And then let's go ahead and try Google Chrome as well. We'll go ahead and try and launch that same error as well. So, okay, so it emulated exactly how we did on our Windows box. I just kind of want to run through all those commands on the X11 just so we get a one-to-one -one comparison. But the really powerful thing is you can do like sudo apt upgrade through SSH and this will go ahead and update everything on the system. I actually just recently up upgraded this. Oh, there's really not much uh, to upgrade. Um, all the other stuff you do in terminal would be just so so easy to actually control your server. And also, uh, in a pinch, you can go ahead and launch into your file manager, move stuff over to like Nextcloud or what you ha what have you to go ahead and share out or Dropbox if you use Dropbox. And that's really some of the most powerful things about X11. And then just doing uh, managing stuff through a graphic editor, uh, just changing uh, things with your server through gedit is extremely powerful because it's just easier to move stuff around a lot of times than just using your keyboard uh, where you have access to your mouse and you can cut, cut and paste a lot of things. So uh, I already showed you like that, that one from earlier, but just to give you an idea of how powerful this is, if, if we're out here and let's say we do test.text. And I, I have something else on this computer. Let me just grab a random file. Let's just do GitHub. And let's say there's like some script or something I'm looking for and I, I wanna just copy paste it. Now this uh, Chromium here is actually launched on my full desktop. This isn't part of X11 forwarding. I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this and then paste it in here. That's pretty cool. So this is uh, the the right hand screen is actually on the local machine. The G edit session is actually piped through X11 forwarding. And I'm just copy pasting stuff in uh, where before, you know, you'd copy and then try and do like shift control shift V to paste it through command prompt into nano. And it's just you have a lot better uh, visual here. You, you have a lot more room to run, so to speak, than dealing with just terminal. So this can be a really powerful way to use SSH and X11 forwarding. And what I find myself using it the most for it is this. And then on occasion, like remote file management, things like that, where I need to actually just get around. So with that, just hit exit to exit the session and we'll hit exit to close out as well. 
So there you have it. That is SSH and X11 forwarding. I absolutely love this feature. I use it on a daily basis. I constantly am adding to like my bash RC and some other files just to do quick remote in and out. Obviously, if it's a secure server or something that is used for business, I would never recommend a shortcut or saving your credentials because people could obviously take advantage of that. However, most of the stuff in this video is test boxes, so I have no problem creating shortcuts in my internal environment because it just doesn't matter if somebody even got a hold of it. There's no sensitive information on there. But with all that, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. And a big shout out to my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you on the next video.